back to Wicked Wands Tarot. My name's Carmen, and today we're going to do a reading for Scorpio on what are they saying about you. Let's call in spirit with some wind chime time. And I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's kind of crazy here in Minneapolis. We got more snow today, so I'm thinking about where else I would like to live in the world. Feel free to submit a suggestion. <laughs> All right, we're going to start off with the Fairy Godmother Oracle. And this will give us an idea of what's being said about you, Scorpio. And then we'll use the tarot to figure out who is saying it and what the outcome will be for you. All right, what do we have for Scorpio, please? What's being said about them? What's being said about Scorpio? One more, please. I love how these cards have like the gold plating on the side. All right, Scorpio, we have companionship, fortuity, vulnerability, and romance. <clears throat> Here's companionship. Here's fortuity. So I'm getting that somebody here is talking about you being kind of like a wish fulfillment here in terms of a partner. There's somebody here who thinks that and says that they believe you would be the kind of partner that they could build like generational wealth, wealth, wealth <laughs> with. <laughs> and then we have vulnerability and romance. So somebody is talking about your ability to, I heard, be a good lover because of being vulnerable. So I think there's someone who is appreciating that you are able to be open and direct and have that willingness to be seen as somebody who you know, can be hurt, but they're seeing this as a strength. So let's see. What do we want to use? We're going to use the, I don't know why, Scorpio, I'm tied to this, or torn. Wow, I can't talk at all. So I think Scorpio, somebody here who's talking about you is struggling to find the right words. All right, I'm drawn to the sexual tarot right now which seems a little bit odd, but that's just what I want. So I think there's somebody here, Scorpio, who is maybe feeling some passion for you. We've got the Nine of Pentacles and the Ten of Swords. The person who's talking about you, Scorpio, who is saying, I would say these nice things about you. This is somebody who is seen as quite independent. They're not in a relationship right now, and they are able to you know, take care of themselves. They probably have their own place or are, you know, at a point in their life where they don't have to worry about whether or not they can maintain their own place. And then with the Ten of Swords, there's also been some sort of betrayal or ending or a uh, difficult situation here between the two of you. What else do we have for Scorpio? For hidden energy, we have the Two of Pentacles. So Scorpio, if you're new to my channel, if it's something that flips over but doesn't fall out, I consider that hidden energy. And the Two of Pentacles is all about, it can be about juggling, but it can also be about trying to get things in order. So I get the sense here that there's a shift happening for this person who's saying these nice things about you. There's um, I believe kind of like a further push into independence and having things ready in their life where they would be able to invest in something like a relationship. I mean, I didn't reach for the sexual tarot because this is somebody who wants to be your friend, right? <laughs> All right, what else do we have for Scorpio? Who is this person that's talking about them? This is somebody 
This is somebody who is respected and successful. We already knew that with the Nine of Pentacles, but with the King of Pentacles, this might be somebody who has also kind of leveled up in terms of uh, their value, right? They may have had a glow up, they might have accrued more respect uh, recently. And with the Six of Pentacles, uh, it looks like this is also somebody who is good at understanding balance and how like an equal give and take should be in a friendship or a relationship and probably prioritizes this as well. I'm seeing a lot of red hair so there might be like somebody who likes to dye their hair red or somebody might have red hair. Obviously that's not going to be for everyone. Alright and then we've got the Ace of Pentacles, the King of Swords, and the Seven of Swords. This is somebody who is not currently on the same page as you, Scorpio, and they're moving in silence. It looks kind of like they're trying to avoid the drama. We've got someone here in the Seven of Swords card who's like, looking out the window at like, what is that, a horse? At the horse. Like kind of trying to distract themselves with not people. <laughs> um, and then we've got the King of Swords and the Ace of Pentacles. This is giving me vibes of somebody who's decided to give themselves their own stability and make things like sustainable for themselves, right? I'm going to put these back in the deck because I've already got six up top here. They gave me three when I only wanted one more. Okay, Scorpio. <laughs> they might come back out for us, though. What else do we have for Scorpio on what is being said about them? So we have the Ten of Pentacles here, the Sun, the Two of Swords, and the Queen of Chalices. So, Scorpio, this person is somebody that you see a lot of happiness with or you've already had a lot of happiness with, and there is, I believe, a pretty, like, um, you both feel that the other one would be, like, on the same level in terms of ambition or success, commitment to being, you know, um, in that kind of generational wealth like zone or like at a place where you don't really have to be living paycheck to paycheck kind of thing right and with the two of swords and the queen of chalices it looks like we might have a feminine energy here who has a choice between two different individuals and I'm just looking at this Two of Swords card. We have a feminine energy here who has a, a raven in the background. I don't know if you can see that. And I think this is commenting on this feminine wanting to be more focused on like people's behavior, people's actions, and logic. <laughs> she wants to be a little bit more practical when it comes to love because as the queen of chalices, this is somebody who is, you know, loving, caring, um, maybe to a fault, right? Like there might be people who have taken advantage of her in the past and she's not looking to have that situation anymore. And yeah, we definitely have a feminine energy here who has a choice with the lovers coming out. This could be why she's moving in silence, because she's trying to figure out what in her gut she knows she should do, but this this feminine energy has a choice. Alright, we are going to hop over to the Tattoo Tarot. I love this little cat that goes on the sexual tarot. <laughs> oh, just in case you want to see him. <laughs> the only non like crystal that I have guarding one of my decks. <laughs> All right, what else do we have for Scorpio, please? We have the moon and the four of swords. 
So Scorpio, there's been a period of time here of healing. So I do feel like there's been some separation or at least like a reduction in the amount of communication or seeing each other, kind of like a winter hibernation kind of vibe. And there's a secret here that needs to come out with the moon coming up here. The fun part is that the moon is right underneath the sun card. So while I still feel that the sun is talking about the emotion of happiness here, there is, I think, a second understanding or message that can be gleaned here, which is to say that the sun is illuminating the secret. So there's something here that has been held back that is going to come out. Yeah. Kind of toss those out. We'll see what else we get. Oh, okay. <laughs> the Hermit and the King of Swords in the reverse. So this is a warning from spirit. Either if you identify with more like the masculine energy, they're saying they want you to avoid being overly defensive. Um, come from a place of love and honesty as opposed to trying to not be in the wrong. And then with the hermit you've learned if you identify with the masculine energy you've learned these lessons if you identify with the feminine energy this person that's coming towards you this is somebody who is going to i mean they're going to surprise you in terms of what they have learned this is somebody who i believe has learned their lessons by watching this queen of chalices because the hermit is clarifying the Queen of Chalices. Oh, shut up, you guys! So, I get the impression that both parties here have options, right? So, it might not just be this Queen of Chalices that has a choice, there might be others but the way both of these people are holding this cup i get the impression that despite having multiple choices these two individuals know exactly who they're supposed to end up with and with the king and queen of cups coming out at the same time i really do feel like there's something here like a component of divine timing right there might have been um, like I said, a period of separation because things were not where they needed to be. There were some lessons that needed to be learned. But with the King and Queen of Cups here, we've got two very well-matched individuals. This could be two water signs, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, that would be Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio. All right, what else for the outcome for Scorpio, please? Mm, you're going to be happy, Scorpio. you got the sun coming out. Then we've got the Knave of Cups, the Ten of Wands, and the Four of Coins. So you are going to put down a burden that has been troubling you for a long time with the Ten of Wands here. You are going to find something, this Cup of Love, it's going to be something that is like held on to, right? There's going to be some stability here. So, all right. I hope you enjoyed your reading today, Scorpio, and that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks.